Consider the following three sentences. Nobody is great. I am nobody and therefore I am great. In three sentences, we can produce a self-contradiction because I am great is contradictory to nobody is great. This problem arises by giving the word nobody two meanings. One, there is no individual and two, there is no importance. When we say nobody is great, we mean that there is no great individual. But when we say that I am nobody, we mean that I have no importance. Since giving each word multiple meanings leads to a contradiction, therefore to avoid these contradictions, each word must be given only one meaning. This means that either one of the two sentences, namely, nobody is great or I am nobody, must be removed from rational conversations. Since these are meaningful sentences, Therefore, by removing them from rational conversations, the discourse becomes incomplete. This is Gödel's first incompleteness theorem. The meaning of the first theorem is that all meaningful sentences cannot be included in a rational language. Only some meaningful sentences are allowed if we want to avoid contradictions. Of course, we can choose which sentences to allow and which ones to deny. By choosing some sentences while rejecting others, we exclude some sentences from a rational conversation. There is no other way to avoid contradictions. Therefore, all rational systems must be incomplete if they use words that can have multiple meanings. To avoid the above problem, one might say that we must substitute the word nobody with the terms no individual and no importance because the substitution clarifies the meaning of the word nobody. In the process, however, we are replacing a shorter word that is nobody with a longer term such as no individual or no importance. After the substitution, we get two different sentences, namely, no individual is great and I am not important. With this substitution, the original contradiction disappears because we are no longer using the same word. Instead, we have substituted the word nobody with no individual and not important. Therefore, the sentence, nobody is great, is replaced by no individual is great. And the sentence, I am nobody, is replaced by the sentence, I am not important. The third sentence, which was, therefore I am great, is not produced because the same word is no longer being used. However, Substitution does not solve the problem because even words like importance and individual have multiple meanings. For example, the word importance can be given many meanings such as the real value of a person and the perceived value of a person. Similarly, the word individual can be given multiple meanings such as a factual individual or a hypothetical individual. Therefore, when someone says no individual is great, it could mean that at the moment no individual is great or it could mean no individual has ever been great. Similarly, when someone says I am not important, it could mean I am not valued according to my true value or it could mean that I am factually useless. Just as the word nobody was expanded into no individual and no importance, similarly, individual and importance can be expanded 
into sentences, which in turn use many words, each of which has many meanings. This will again lead to new contradictions. We can try to substitute a word by a phrase or a phrase by a sentence or a sentence by a paragraph, but we can never eliminate contradictions because each additional word has multiple meanings. Therefore, as we try to substitute words with phrases, phrases by sentences or sentences by paragraphs, the number of contradictions will increase. To eliminate these contradictions, we have to eliminate many words, phrases, sentences, and paragraphs, thereby continuously limiting discourse. This is Gödel's second incompleteness theorem. It means that no rational system can ever include all the sentences because each sentence uses words with multiple meanings. The conclusion is that we cannot universally substitute meanings by words or words by meanings because each word has many meanings and each meaning can be represented by many words. Since words and meanings are not reducible to each other, therefore, there are at least two tiers of reality, one that we perceive by the senses, namely the words, and the other that we perceive by the mind, namely the meaning. Any reduction of the mind or meaning to a body or words or vice versa is forever incomplete. Any rational system can handle some sentences correctly, which are denoted by the blue one-to-one -one mapping between word and meaning. All cross meanings denoted by the red mappings are forbidden. Before we move further, it is important to also briefly talk about Gödel's completeness theorem. It essentially says that logic is itself consistent and complete, which means that the problem of incompleteness is not the result of logic. However, we have to ask, what is logic? Aristotle defined logic as one word has only one meaning. He writes in Meditations that not to have one meaning is to have no meaning, and if words have no meaning, our reasoning with one another and indeed with ourselves has been annihilated. For it is impossible to think of anything if we do not think of one thing. Therefore, when Gödel proved that logic is consistent through the Gödel's completeness theorem, he essentially proved that if words have only one meaning, then the rational system is consistent. His subsequent theorem on incompleteness then proved that the rational system is incomplete when one word has multiple meanings. Therefore, completeness and incompleteness are tightly related concepts. If each word has only one meaning, then the rational system is complete. However, since all real words have multiple meanings, therefore, each rational system is incomplete when it uses words with multiple meanings. Now you might be wondering why I am talking about ordinary language when Gödel's incompleteness is about numbers. The answer is that the problem of incompleteness is easy to illustrate with ordinary words, but harder to demonstrate with numbers, although the problem is the same. Even numbers have multiple meanings. For example, in a computer, that uses the binary digits one and zero, there are three kinds of meanings assigned to these digits. One and zero can be data, instructions, or truth values. Each of these three interpretations of one and zero are stored in separate memories in the computer. In each memory, there is only one interpretation of one and zero. 
multiple interpretations are not permitted for the same memory. For example, we cannot mix the data and instruction memories of the computer because 1 and 0 are interpreted differently in these two memories. The computer is designed to always interpret 1 and 0 in a different type of memory differently. We can now see that ordinary language and mathematics have essentially the same problem. The problem is that logic allows only word meaning, one meaning for each word. Although numbers have multiple meanings and words have multiple meanings. The multiple meanings of a word cannot be used in any rational discourse that you employs logic because as we saw above, Aristotle defined logic as the use of a word with only one meaning. All the words that have multiple meanings cannot be part of the same rational conversation. They can, of course, be part of mutually exclusive rational conversations. Therefore, each conversation must choose only one word meaning pair. The other word meaning pairs must be reserved for other conversations. The problem of mathematical incompleteness can be demystified if we consider the fact that ones and zeros in a computer are being used with figures of speech. For example, in the data memory, 1 and 0 are used as nouns. In the instruction memory, the same 1 and 0 are used as verbs. Finally, in the memory that stores truth values, 1 and 0 are used as adjectives. The same number, namely 1 or 0, is being used alternatively as nouns, verbs, and adjectives. Similarly, nouns themselves can be divided into common noun, proper noun, and a pronoun. A pointer in a computer is like a pronoun. It points towards a data or instruction with a name. The data itself is like a proper noun. However, we can also define classes of objects or data structures, and they will denote common nouns. Thus, noun itself is a big category, and in a given context, we cannot use the same word to denote a common noun, a proper noun, and a pronoun. That will certainly cause a computer error. This problem rapidly aggravates as we take into account ordinary conversations. For instance, Words uttered in different tones can have different meanings. Words in a different culture or clique can have different meanings. Each speaker means something different when he uses some words than other speakers. Each speaker uses different words in different relationships. Or words in relationships mean something different. By the combinations, of tones, pitches, cultures, cliques, individuals, and relationships, enormous complexity is created. All this is necessary complexity. We need this complexity to express the complexity of the world. However, mathematics is incapable of dealing with this complexity. Mathematics can only deal with an idealized situation in which one word has only one meaning. Varied types of meanings cannot be handled in mathematics.